Hi everybody, Matthew Turns here. Hope your new year is off to a good start. Uh, did some traveling over the holidays and I'm glad to be kind of settling back in and uh, hope to get back to uh, to doing regular videos and hoping to get back on a once a week schedule, which uh, I did for uh, chunks of last year, but uh, sometimes, you know, life gets in the way. But that is my goal. And uh, I am very excited about 2022 and potential releases uh, in the Beatles family. Uh, the one we know for sure is coming right now is the Sometime in New York City Ultimate Mixes, and I'm really looking forward to that. I'm not a huge fan of that album, but I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, much of the way uh, some of Paul McCartney's archives, like uh, Wildlife, for example, really helped increase my appreciation for those albums, I'm hoping to get a similar effect out of Sometime in New York City because there are a few songs that I just really like in there and it'll just be interesting to see what they can do with the box set of that. But anyway, uh, one of the, what I wanted to talk about today uh, is uh, review my favorite Beatles album. I've mentioned before that it's my favorite and, and talked about it here and there, but I haven't done a full review and I thought that might be a good way to kick off the new year and uh, get myself back into uh, the swing of some uh, some more regular videos, I hope. And one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this album, too, is uh, uh, a couple weeks ago, my video that I'd done a while back, um, uh, the video on Was Wings a Real Band, got a couple of comments of people uh, espousing the uh, the Paul is dead theory and uh, that he'd been replaced and all that uh, stuff. I, I think that's baloney and not really worth talking about. But of course it did bring to mind this album cover. Um, uh, the iconic album cover, Abbey Road. And uh, we got to talk a little bit about this cover before we get into the album itself. Um, when I bought this album around 2000 or so, that was the year I started buying all the Beatles albums on CD. Um, and I had, uh, I'd had Red and Blue prior to that, and, um, uh, and, uh, so I really only knew on Abbey Road the four tracks that are on, um, that are on the Blue album, uh, something, Here Comes the Sun, Come Together, and Octopus's Garden. Um, but I did, of course, know the, uh, the cover, uh, uh, it's such an iconic image, but also, of course, knew some of the uh, alleged symbolism uh, behind the Paul is Dead theory. Uh, so when I bought this album, uh, I was really interested in hearing about it because uh, beyond, you know, the iconography of the cover, I knew it was supposed to be one of their best albums. Um, I, of course, did not know at the time that it would become uh, uh, my favorite. But uh, but I picked it up, uh, knew it had a good reputation, and... Uh, I was looking forward to diving into it, and so I'll go through uh, track by track and kind of talk about uh, uh, how I found the album at the time uh, and, and how I uh, regard it today. Of course, we opened up with Come Together. That was a song, not only did I know the Beatles version, as I said, had it on the Blue album, but uh, uh, my first exposure to that song would have come uh, around 1990 when I first really started collecting music, and the first band that I really got into at that time was Aerosmith. Of course, they had done a cover of it on the 1978 Sgt. Pepper's film soundtrack, and I got their version through Aerosmith's Greatest Hits. It's a very faithful version, um, but it's, um, it's you know, got a bit of that Aerosmith uh, uh, grit and sleaziness, maybe, and uh, not quite as smooth as the original. I really... Uh, uh, even though I, I loved uh, Aerosmith and liked their version, um, the Beatles version, when I heard it on the Blue album, and then and then moving into Abbey Road, when I got that album, really pretty easily surpassed it. Uh, Paul's uh, bass line is so uh, kind of smooth and just uh, and just lays down such a great uh, groove to it. Of course, John's vocals are great. Um, great playing throughout and it's it's a great way to open the album you know it's not a big bombastic opener um and but it's not like too mellow either it kind of eases you in a little bit with that that bass lick and uh and builds up and uh you know great uh great song and uh 
and a uh, absolute classic to open up the album with. Uh, but what's remarkable is when you open up with a with a track as good as Come Together, and then you follow it up with an even better track for me, which is something. Um, uh, this is uh, George's absolute masterpiece. It's my favorite George Harrison song he ever did. Um, it's such a great ballad, uh, such great, uh, such great lyrics, and and uh, very uh, meaningful. And the melody is so great. Uh, George plays brilliant guitar throughout. Uh, the little hook um, going out of the verses. Uh, dun, 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 dun. And it's it's just so uh, so well done and sounds uh, so great in the recording. Um, much credit also to uh, to George Martin and and Jeff Emmerich and and everyone involved in in the actual recording of the album. The sound is captured perfectly, and of course Paul's brilliant bass line. Uh, I know George thought that Paul may have been a bit busy on the track, but I think the bass line really uh, brings a lot to the song and uh, is one of my favorite parts of the song. Next up is Maxwell Silver Hammer. Uh, I've said many times how I'm a huge fan of Paul. He's my favorite Beatle. I love his solo albums, the best of the solo albums. Um, but uh, but uh, Maxwell Silver Hammer with Paul being Paul's first track on the album is a little bit of a letdown. Of course, like I said, it's coming off two all-time classics uh, just before that with Come Together and Something. Um, I do like the um, uh, the dissonance, I guess, if you will, between the lyrical content and the the uh, the music. You know, it's got sort of bouncy Paul Granny music kind of vibe, and then the, uh, the dark lyrics are interesting, but it's... Um, it's a good song. I enjoy it. I never skip it, but it's uh, it's my least favorite on the album for sure. Uh, next up is Oh Darling, uh, a good uh, bluesy Paul number, and uh, and his vocals on it are really great. Uh, uh, of course, we all know the story about how Paul went in every day before um, before the rest of the band arrived and would do the vocal over and over until he got the perfect take and and he did his his voice uh such a rawness in there and and power but having said that back when i first bought the album i liked the song but uh, at this point i remember thinking uh, the first time i listened to it it's like wow paul is really not holding up to his end in the way i would expect but uh fortunately paul had a lot of great stuff uh, to come uh, next up, Octopus's Garden. Of course, when I first heard this, this album, I was already familiar with the song through the Blue album. It's a great Ringo song. It's got a great sense of uh, sense of humor about it. I love the little uh, effects and everything in it. It is, in that way, slightly reminiscent of Yellow Submarine, both with the, uh, the underwater theme and all the sound effects and stuff in the background. But it's a fun song, well done, well written by by Ringo and the band. The production really gives it something. Uh, so then John closes outside one with uh, I Want You, She's So Heavy, and it's, uh, it's a great song. Uh, you know, it's the, the blues uh, aspect of it and the desperation of John's vocal and then the, uh, and the She's So Heavy section, how it just builds and builds and builds. Um, it's such a well-constructed song um, and, uh, and of course the, uh, the white noise effect of, from the Moog synthesizer that comes in as it builds up is really well done. Um, something else I should talk about with this album is, uh, the, the Moog, uh, introduced by, uh, George Harrison, uh, on this album into the Beatles music. Uh, he was of course one of the early, uh, uh, musicians to get a hold of one of those and, and begin using in the recording. And it's, uh, you know, it's not all over the album, but it, it when it is used, it is used to excellent effect, including that white now, white noise sound as, as they build up to the end of, uh, I want you, she's so heavy. And then the abrupt cutoff uh, of the track is, is very effective. Although I will say again, I first heard this album on CD and that, that, uh, uh, abrupt cutoff obviously is very arresting to the listener even on the uh, the CD version but years later when I finally got it on vinyl 
I noticed how much more effective it is with that ending and then that's it. You've got to get up and flip the side over or, you know, it's just nothing, you know, whereas when you listen to it on the CD, you know, it ends and you have just maybe a couple seconds of silence and then you're into Here Comes the Sun. So, so that's a different experience too. I mean, that, that, that build up and that cut off and then to a, 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 a softer, um, you know, song like uh, Here Comes the Sun that does create an interesting contrast, but it's not quite as effective as you end the side that way and then have to get up, like I said, and flip the album over to, for the music to continue. So I thought that was really well done. And it's, uh, again, it's the sort of thing that for those of us like me who came up in the, uh, it came into the Beatles, that is, in the in the CD age, you know, you did sort of miss out on that a bit. Um, Here Comes the Sun kicks off side two and it's another great George song. Uh, it's interesting to me that that's become his, his that's become the Beatles' most played song on Spotify. Um, it is a great song. I'm glad it gets so much love, uh, especially from uh, from younger listeners, apparently. Um, but to me, again, something is his masterpiece, uh, not only this album, but of his whole career and the best single track on, on Abbey Road. But Here Comes the Sun. Hey, can't complain about it. It's such a beautiful song and... Um, and such evocative uh, lyrics and imagery. Um, last February, we had an ice storm come through, uh, come through around here, and it was it was really bad. I was locked up uh, in the house for basically a week. Uh, couldn't get out. Um, we lost wa uh, water for a few days, and so it was kind of depressing there. And then, uh, and then after about four or five days. Finally, the clouds had parted enough that there was some sun shining through and it was going to, even though we were going to be below freezing, there was going to be enough sunshine to start, you know, sort of melting some of the ice. Maybe the roads wouldn't be quite so treacherous. And uh, and I remember uh, looking out, seeing those shafts of sun uh, light coming through the sky that morning and coming back and putting this on and had to listen to that, that track. And it, uh, you know what a great uplifting experience that was. Uh, um, and it's a great song. Next up is Because, some of the best three-part harmonies that the Beatles ever did. Um, and a great, uh, great sounding song. It's so uh, sort of un unusual with, uh, with uh, the way it's, it's put together to me. It's, uh, but, it, but it's all about the vocals. Uh, the backing is, is interesting, uh, what there is of it, but, uh, but the vocals, the way the, the three um, singers, uh, John, Paul, and George, blend together on that is brilliant. Now, again, like I said, I first encountered this uh, album on CD, and other than those four tracks that I'd heard, uh, I didn't know a whole lot about the album. I knew that it was well known for a medley that was on side two of the album. I, when I actually bought the CD, I didn't really even know where side two uh, started. Uh, and then I didn't know which songs were part of the medley because as you know from the medley, there are a few places in there where there's a little break. Uh, the big one being between, um, she came in through the bathroom window and golden slumbers so that, you know, sometimes on the radio, you'll just hear that last section of the medley, you know, and it, it holds together on its own. You know, you could play it up to, she came in through the bathroom window and there's a good stopping point. You know, actually, you could even probably even break it off between, you never give me your money and um, Sun King if you really wanted to. But, um, but because of that, um, I didn't know where the medley actually started. And when I first bought it on CD, I actually thought because was where the medley started. Because like I said, there's that little pause there, there's a, a pause in between tracks, but you have that again later in the medley. And to me, it just kind of fit the mood a little bit, the, a bit of the journey. So even, you know, uh, sometime after hearing it a few times, then I found out, no, it's You Never Give Me Your Money is the start of the, the medley. Um, still in my mind, I think uh, Because is such a great lead-in to, to, to the medley. To me, there's still a little even though I don't think of it as being part of the medley anymore, because I know it's not, but, but as a, as a lead in, I still feel that connection in my own mind because that's the way I interpreted it when I first heard it and didn't know any better. Um, you never give me your money. Here is where Paul 
really shows up. Uh, it, like I said, uh, Oh Darling is a great song. And uh, Maxwell Silverhammer, I like fine. It's, it was compared to what I expect from Paul, you know, maybe not great, but uh, You Never Give Me Your Money is so beautiful. Uh, the melodies are so great. The lyrics are so great. Um, it's uh, it's one of the high points of the album for me. And, uh, and and it's such a great kickoff to this this medley because you t it takes you on such a, a journey through all the these pieces of music. It's really I think a testament to um, to their vision and creativity that they could take songs that are really pretty disparate and there's no real unifying theme lyrically, uh, but it makes sense to me as a piece. Uh, and in fact, uh, I'll say, I've said it before, I think, uh, I'm not sure if I've said it on the channel before, but uh, but this medley, I think, is the best thing that they ever did. Um, uh, it, it's it, I can't say it's their best song because it incorporates several songs, but it's, but as, as a piece, I feel like it's the best thing that they ever did. Of course, Sun King is so beautiful. Again, the harmonies there, um, that's another great aspect of this album is is the harmonies that come through on several of the tracks. The, you know, for all the problems that the Beatles were having at the time this album was made, um, there's no there's no denying that, they, that as a musical team, they still had it, absolutely. All the years and the experience uh, of playing together and singing together, it all really paid off in, in their performances on this album. Uh, mean Mr. Mustard is a fun uh, little uh, bit here in the medley. And then into Polythene Pam, I love the guitars in that, uh, the tone of the guitars. And uh, one of my favorite bits of the medley is that transition from uh, Polythene Pam into She Came In Through the Bathroom Window because it just kind of builds, you know, builds with the drums and everything. And then it just kind of, then it just feels like you just kind of slide into um, she came in through the bathroom window. That transition there is just so masterfully done. Um, and she came in through the bathroom window is is a great, uh, great piece. Uh, amazing guitar work from George in that one. I really like the guitar bits all throughout. Uh, fun lyrics from Paul, well sung. And then... Uh, you know that sets us up for the uh, the big three at the end. Of course, golden slumbers uh, lyrics uh, Paul had uh, encountered from a songbook used to good effect here. The the musical accompaniment that he comes up with is is brilliant, and of course we um, we and then we move into carry that weight, and and that's one of the the things I enjoyed most about the Get Back film is is seeing early versions of several songs from Abbey Road and from the medley, but particularly Golden Slumbers and Carry That Weight and seeing how Paul had sort of envisioned them originally as separate tracks, you know, and Carry That Weight and what it could have been, what some of the other verses could have been um, had he gone in that direction, uh, you know, and as a, as a vehicle for Ringo. But those are great songs, and of course, and in there you also get the uh, what sort of finally makes it uh, seem like more of an overarching design to the medley. The callbacks to "You Never Give Me Your Money" is it kind of ties it back to the beginning, and and then sets us up, of course, for the end, which is uh, such a great way to close the album. Um, uh, giving all four of the musicians a chance to shine. Great drum solo from Ringo. Um, as it happens, I've happened to catch in my in my car um, uh, a couple times in the last week uh, the medley playing on the uh, the Beatles channel on Sirius, and uh, and, and just in, in your vehicle, crank up that drum solo. It sounds great. And then of course the the uh, the guitar solos, uh, each of the three uh, guitarists trading off, you know, in the order of Paul, George, and John, uh, and they go through three times each, and it's uh, and it's great. Of course, uh, all their solos are good. I like all of them, but uh, but John really takes uh, great uh, great advantage of of being last in the sequence. The way he kind of builds it up. 
going into uh, you know the last piece of it. So you have that big like comes up to a big musical climax, and then all of a sudden, just the piano and uh, and the vocals, uh, and in the and in the end, the love you take is equal to the love you make. Some of my favorite lyrics uh, from the Beatles, uh, sung well, and then George's guitar uh, over the end of that is just so beautifully done, so tastefully played. Um, I get emotional every time I listen to it. It's so brilliant. And then, of course, we have the uh, little palate cleanser at the end to kind of, after such a big uh, emotional buildup, you know, they, the Beatles being who they are can't leave us uh, on too serious a note. And they have to put a little tongue-in-cheek and add on. Uh, Her Majesty is uh, sort of a, a coda there on at the end, which is a fun little piece. So it's it's such a brilliant album. Uh, immediately after I first heard it, uh, uh, I was like, you know, this is one of my top five albums of all time. And, and uh, I would put it top of the heap now. It's such an amazing, amazing uh, achievement. Um, and it's, it's fascinating to think that, uh, that they could do this at the end of their recording career together. Um, regardless of all the other issues, uh, personality conflicts uh, and especially business conflicts that were driving them apart and, and just the fact that you had three uh, main songwriters who all had their own vision of what they wanted to do and they needed the space to go off and do that and I think that uh, that meant they had to go out on their own um, but this shows that they never lost the ability to make great music together that was never the problem so a brilliant way to cap off a brilliant career. The Beatles Abbey Road, my favorite Beatles album of all time. Uh, let me know in the comments uh, your thoughts on the album. Is it, uh, is it one of your favorite uh, Beatles albums? Do you think it's overrated maybe? Uh, how do you feel about the medley? Uh, like I said, I think it's the best thing that they ever did. Um, uh, do, you, do you love the medley like I do? Or do you feel like John did that it was... Uh, it was just a bunch of stuff strung together that, uh, you know, uh, only made sense because they said it made sense, you know. Um, anyway, uh, let me know your thoughts, and uh, I'll be back next week uh, through this whole get back uh, thing. You know, one of the things I've been thinking about a lot is is Alan Klein and his place in Beatles history, so... Um, so uh, that's one of the things I want to talk about uh, next time. We'll get into a little bit of my thoughts of Alan Klein. Uh, I've also in the last few months been reading some more books about the uh, the late uh, period Beatles and his role in that. So, so look forward to that, uh, hopefully within about a week or so. And uh, thank you all for watching.